Uh, right, so the next important steps to trying to get to a place in Portugal is the D7 National Visa application, which is expensive, 250, I'm sure, 252 pounds for the whole process. That's what you pay them, and it's like costing 160 pounds in train fares. But yeah, we're getting all the paperwork together in our camper. Uh, like it, the printer takes up loads of room at the back, so it's all very squeezed, trying to keep the paper all neat and organised. But yeah, we're trying the best we can, and we're hoping we've got everything we need for the visa. Isn't that right, Nina? Yes. So this is us getting ready. Yeah, wish us luck. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Right, Stephen, are we ready then for tomorrow? As ready as I think we can be. This is for our D7 visa. Yeah, for residency in Portugal. And hopefully we both get it. Yeah. Can you explain a bit more for us? Okay, we've got lots of bits of paper. That's my pile. And then you've got your pile. So we're doing it, well, not sh going for two visas, a visa each. That's one way doing it. The other way was if I got a visa and you come with me and then we have family reunification. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're doing it this way because you're nervous about doing it the other way. I think you're gonna I'm just scared in case you get your you. visa I think I'm run away. <laughs> and I'm left here or anything happens to either one of us or so, yourself. Yeah, we've got a we're stuck. tomorrow in London, VFS Global. Um, and um, yeah, this is the paper that we get together, so cover letter, apparently important, explaining why you want to move to Portugal and how you're going to support yourself. Then application form, you put which are free papers we can download off of their website. And, and you, you've written a list as well, haven't yeah, so you? Yeah, I've written a list, so visa application and passport photos. Dunk. Dunk. Copy of passport. Donk. Uh, uh, de de what does that mean? It's uh, like gi giving authorisation to the Portuguese to check your criminal records in Portugal. Oh, okay, yep. So you have to have that. Copy of your tunnel ticket. You have to pre book, or, or if you're going a flight ticket, just a copy of your electronic ticket they ask for. That what, bit. so that they know you're actually travelling there? Just mm. that you're serious about going, I suppose. Okay. So we've booked a, a US star ticket. Yeah. Uh, but I paid more, so it's refundable. What, in case we don't get our passports back in time from Portugal? In case, yeah, because we, we give our passports in. If they don't come back in time, then I can cancel that ticket or move the date. Okay. And after that is a, a police certificate, which is not a... What's that one you said? DBS. It's not DBS. It's from... ACRO Criminal Records Office, which you go online and apply for it. It's pretty simple, but it's expensive. How much does that cost? Well, we did it quick because we wanted to get it through quick. Mm. So we paid for the premier service, it was £104 and all. Cool. Recorded certificate. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Uh, fiscal number. So we already got that. Our lawyer got that for us in Portugal before we even went to Portugal. Okay. And then we've, this is stuff they've not asked for. Birth certificate. Uh, yeah, so, uh, this, yeah, they've not asked for it, but we've included the birth certificate and marriage certificate. Uh, and this is a promissory contract when we bought the house and our sales certificate. So we've got included both for the property we bought in Portugal. So to prove that we've got adequate accommodation, we have, because we've got a house that we can live in there. Uh, utility contracts. Oh, that's wrong order. I've got your pension here. Yeah. Pension first. So I've got you in the wrong order. <laughs> yeah, I'll see. Good job we're checking now. Yeah, promise the contract then. It's your pension. God. You haven't got utility contracts in yours. You're going to take that out. Oh, damn it. That means we've got it's to got reprint a line that one. It. Oh, it's supposed to take that. Need them because they're not in her name. But, so you've got pension details. So any details of pensions you got, prove that you, what we get later on in life. I've got to not that they that. probably might. They're not really concerned about that thing. I think they, they're more interested. And then we've got 
Like bank account. Port, uh, we've got a Portuguese bank account. You've got uh, utility contracts, but you don't need them in yours because the utility contracts are in my name, so they're in my pack. They don't ask for that either, but just in case, it proves that we're paying electric and water there. And you've got pen proof of your pensions and premium bonds. That's that. And then Dieter's over our Portuguese bank account. We've got a joint Portuguese bank account with, um, they want at least a year's income each in it, like in euros. So I recommend having the two people, if you're buying for two visas, having 20,000 euros in it. Mm. It's not a lot of, it's a lot of money, money to... especially if it's in a different country. Yeah. So we've got a bank status. We opened it up back in August, the bank account. And we're getting money in there. Yeah, and even though it's a joint account, it's strange that when you print them off... Yeah, it's got my name in it. I don't know why. But uh, you know, as in there's not mine, mine as well. It's yeah, just but the yours. first page says your name. Yeah. It. And then details of all the, what money we've got in our UK bank accounts. So it's basically just proving that you're not going to go over there and go, I've got no money left. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can I have some help? Yeah. That's all they want. And then we have to have our travel insurance. For a, So I've got single trip travel insurance, insurance for a year. Uh, we did go there the other week and we got sent away because this was wrong. I put the... The visa office sent of us us away, yeah. Because yeah. I said, I, on my insurance, I said, oh, I'm going to Portugal, so I want travel insurance for Portugal. And she says we need to be covered for the whole Schengen area. Uh, so when I rung up to update it, they yeah, I had to add 21 countries to the list. So I can go to 21 countries, but I'm only going to one. <laughs> and that was an extra £207. So in all, it's like £580 for travel insurance. Cool. But that's a year, single trip travel insurance. Especially when we might only, if we're only allowed there for three months at a time, that's only six months. In the one country and not going to 21 yeah, countries. But it covers us for a year if like, it's got yeah. repatriation. So basically, we're not going to be a burden on their state. No. So that's that. And the last thing was uh, because of the Portuguese bank account, although it's meant to be a joint account, and Nina's cards doesn't work for some reason, and it always got my name on the letters, so we've got to sort that out. But for that reason, I've done a letter of intent which says basically that uh, me... Stephen, that will support my wife Nina financially <laughs> while we're in Portugal. Yeah, and also because and we that. haven't got anything in Portugal that you know says my name on it. That's why you're no, doing that. No, we've got to get some utility bills in your name as well. Yeah, and they don't. You know, they just always seem they just to go want for the a man, bit of yeah, all for the man, all, but, but they need both. Yeah. But yeah, we get the internet in your name or so. Yeah. But that's it. So you've just got to reprint, got something wrong on there, you've got to reprint. Yeah. So again, we're off to London tomorrow, tomorrow. early. Yeah. So it's costing us extra now. Yeah, because we've got to in... go in peak time. So the train ticket's more expensive. Mm. We've got to be there at 11, so it means leaving here, mm. catch the train at 9. Yeah. I'm so... not driving up there because it's a silly place to drive. Yeah. So, once we get this done, so we're going to go up there, we go through the um, security bit, yeah. sign in at the office downstairs, yeah. and they let us upstairs. And she there's, goes through all our paperwork. There's like three booths, isn't there? Yes, three booths for Portugal because it's very popular. Yeah. D7 at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, so that's it. Until tomorrow, we find out how we get on. Woohoo, fingers okay. crossed. Yeah, Bye. Bye. we're at Ham Street's um, train station, ready to head to London. Um, hopefully, we've all got all our stuff ready for our visa, and we'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed. Big day today. This is hopefully they take our passports, <laughs> and we at least get that over to Portugal, and then we we'll see how see how the day heads out.
made it to 66 Wilson Street in London. Um, <coughs> We've got an hour to wait, but at least we found where we are. So, should we find somewhere locally for you know, sort of a refreshment and see where we go from there? Yeah, I see. Go down that road over there and see what it's about. We've arrived at the visa application centre, but no filming is allowed inside. Well, we went for the visa application in VFS in London, but this is a list of all the things we took. Uh, apart from on the right hand side, we didn't take proof of income or means of support. Uh, we got savings in our bank account from the proof, you know, from the sale of our house. But they wanted proof of that. They said someone could have just lent us the money. But hopefully it's going to be alright. And if not, they're going to email us from the uh, consulate for proof. We just give them the sale contract or something. But yeah, that's a list of everything we took, which was all okay apart from the proof of income. So if you've got pension and stuff like that, you need to take that long. Okay. <laughs>